All right. So thank you so much for, for doing this tutorial for us. What are you going to show us today? Um, I'm going to go over, um, I called it the, I've, I've already released it on the Nexus actually as a modern resource. I called it just the Lost Tomb, a really generic name. Um, but it's basically a modern resource that um, focuses on scripted battles. Mm -hmm. um, it includes four battles, all of which are have scripted elements. They go from simple to more complex. Um, I was going to play through them and talk about the fights a little bit. And then, uh, and then after that, maybe go into the scripts a little bit more. And see how it's done. Yeah. Okay, I'm sounds look under good. The hood a little bit. Okay, show us those uh, boss fights. All right, I should already have my spawn point set here. Isn't the CSSC beautiful when testing it mods? It is. This, yeah, the, I think this Lost Tomb is the first thing I actually... And MGEXE is going to take a minute to do its thing. But... Yeah, that's Oh, that's fine. way faster than normal. Yeah, okay. because it doesn't load everything. Nice. Um, but yes, I think this resource is actually the first thing I made with... Um... All right, Errol. This is the first thing I made with the CSSE. It's amazing. Yeah, if you, if you get this ESP, I put some cheaty weapons here um, to help test. Um, okay. At oh, yeah. least you, Each you, of these doors... you hid your, your items to play test. It's happened to me a few times. I have cheaty items or the quest items I need in a barrel, and then I forget to delete the barrel. Yeah. <laughs> Classic. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and I mean, technically, this is a resource, so I wouldn't expect it to be part of a real playthrough, but mm -hmm. just in case, because you can get here in vanilla, I just wanted to. But yeah, each of these doors leads to its own fight. Um, and yeah, I guess I'll just go through them in order, starting with Olga the Barbarian. Um, yeah, I just all of these are in the arena, and I'm just, this isn't even scripted, but I'm just going to literally make them start fighting me. Okay. Okay. So this is a very straightforward fight, and I've got this cheaty weapon, so she's not going to do any damage to me. But So it's a normal fight up until she gets a bit below half health. Mm. So she says that voice line, there's a big explosion of frost, she gets a frost shield, and she also gets, you don't see it necessarily, but she gets a lot of passive buffs. Um, I, I, I didn't this, hear the like, voice when... line, but that's because we're not, I don't think we're picking up the audio from your game. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm not sure how that works with the Discord call. Uh, she just said that she will bathe in my blood. Lovely, um, lovely. Yeah. So when, when she hits 50% of her life, basically she turns into a frozen berserker. Yeah, pretty mm -hmm. much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but uh, she also gets some passive health regeneration at this point. Um, okay, the frost shield's about to get annoying, so I'm just going to kill her really quickly. Um, and also all of these fights, uh, at least all of the NPC fights, they they have a leveling script that, that uh, increases their stats based on player level. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm at level one with this test character, obviously, so that's not going to kick in. But we'll go over that more with the scripting. Go back to this sword, and now we'll look at Aldrin the Rogue. He is much more sneaky. And as you're fighting him, he will actually, if you close in on him, he'll teleport around the battlefield and hit you with a flashbang. Oh, nice. Okay. Get my sword out. So if I stay in melee with him for a few seconds, <laughs> he hits me with a flashbang, and then he teleports over there. And Very the flashbang is just blindness and sound. And we'll see him do that one more time. And you also notice he switches between, uh, he switches between uh, melee and range depending on how close you are to him. Mm -hmm. I also had to script that. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, he'll do. He would he would actually teleport closer to you if I had a ranged weapon and stayed far away. That's a very very smart combatant. Yes. It's fun. And now I'm going to kill him because he's shown all his tricks. <laughs> <laughs> You're um, done. Yes, you've proved your usefulness. Um, 
Yeah, I actually make him switch weapons uh, because AI, the AI in Morrowind is a little hard to manipulate sometimes. So mm -hmm. I had to actually take his weapons away and give them back to him, mm -hmm. like with scripts, depending on how far away the player is. Um, so when he dies, I actually have to do a final check to give the player the correct loot so that he actually has all the weapons on him. Oh, because yes, of course, you, you, you take one, give another one to make sure he'd equip the yeah. one you want, I see. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. Um, this one is the Sorceress. It's probably the most... Um, it probably has the most actually complicated mechanics in it. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a little less uh, cinematic, I guess. We'll just go through this one and I'll talk few, uh, through a few things as they happen. So the first trick, and this is a really simple trick that I use. Her, she only uses two spells. Mm -hmm. Oh lord, okay, here's these. <laughs> um, so let's talk about what just happened. Um, so the first very simple thing that I like that anyone can do without any scripting, um, I added this shield effect to her offensive spell so she doesn't waste time like doing a bunch of spell casting animations. Mm -hmm. um, because otherwise, like your spell casters can get really bogged down if you um, if you let them just cast all their setup spells. So I just combine yeah. them all as much as I can. Mm -hmm. Because they, they go, basically they go through their whole spell list until they run out of magicka. Yeah. Yeah, so um, you have the spell casting AI, you kind of have to get a little creative with it. Um, so I limit her spells a lot and I combine effects into single spells. Mm -hmm. These things, I actually really like these paper tornadoes because they, um, they follow the player and they damage you as they go. Now what you just saw there, you saw this flying book. Yeah. And these will go away here in a minute. I just have to evade them. Um, I'm going to wait for another book to show up. Oh, actually, let's hit me with this. There it is. So she just hit me with a singularity that is pulling me up to the center point. And then it drops me down and makes me fall. Nice. Uh, yeah, that that's probably my favorite thing. Um, there is a little bug that happens with that occasionally. Um, it's this weird critical hit bug. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what causes it. It only happens a small percentage of the time. Um, I think I would be willing to ship a mod with that problem, but you know, <laughs> it, your mileage may vary. Um, it's not a huge thing. It, it basically just causes an audio glitch and then it'll make the next hit against you be a critical hit randomly. I don't know what causes it. Um, but as you can see, nothing bad happened there, so. Okay, more tornadoes. Oh, see. Here's the book. So you need yeah. you need so to avoid the book to not get caught in a singularity. Uh, the singularity is actually one of her spells that she casts. Um, uh, it's got nothing to do book... with the book. Nope. <laughs> okay, it it looked like there was a book like above your head with the singularity and everything. Okay. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I'm sorry. You're right about that. Um. Uh. So that book doesn't actually cast a spell on you. It just appears when she hits you with the spell. I see. Um, yeah, and and so it like draw. I just wanted it to look cool, so I just put a book in there. Um, mm -hmm. And these are I should shout out Dark Nuts uh, Apocrypha yeah. assets that I'm using here. <laughs> They're really cool. I love these paper tornadoes in these books. Um, yeah, he did yeah. a he did a great job for for that madness with the. Oh, she hit me with the thing again. Ouch! Yeah. <laughs> With all kinds of animated stuff happening, which is very nice. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's that's enough of you. We've seen all your tricks. She has. I I, I envisioned her being like a much tougher boss than the others. Mm -hmm. See that book tried to hit me with a fireball. Um, but we'll explain all that here in a minute. Um, yeah, I wanted her to be like a more in, in, intimidating boss, so she had more health than the other two. Mm hmm. Okay, last one. We're going to fight the the Bone Lord in the Haunted Tomb. You see, I was actually planning on making this one like a real mod. You see, I made even part of a map for it. Yeah. But um, I just eventually decided to release this as a resource for other people to do. Um, yeah, so you just walk up and then you see this completely harmless looking floating skull. <laughs> and obviously you go, ooh, I should touch it. Yes, definitely Ooh. nothing Indiana Jones will happen if I touch this. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Oh, hi. Um, and so actually at this point, this force field shows up and uh, uh -huh. it actually disables your teleportation, which 
to be fair, you need to be careful with as a modder. <laughs> you always have to remember to re-enable their teleportation later. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so at first he just attacks you with melee attacks until you kill him. Then he goes up there and summons friends. Oh no, levitating and then using <laughs> summons or range attack. That is so underhanded. Who does that? Yeah, he's basically using player <laughs> stress. Exactly. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> <laughs> but he only he only floats for like 10 seconds um then the next phase he gets some friends up there oh and he paralyzes you in this phase so that's fun um okay <clears throat> get some archer friends up there you kill him again he goes up there again and summons more friends and this oh. time he fires a poison thing and um, all this time you cannot i chose poison because undead i'm sorry what was that and all this time, you cannot run away. Yeah. <laughs> this is a very intense fight. Yeah, clearly. Um, you were saying you chose poison so that the undead wouldn't get the friendly fire? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, it's the same reason why I use the frost damage with the Nord. Mm -hmm. Yeah, makes and, sense. Um, and actually, when you kill this guy, these, these annoying fellows up here are scripted to die. And those are the four fights. Because um, they're not actually I, summons. I mean, they look like summons, but they're scripted right, to appear. Yeah. Okay, this one is um, nasty. Yeah, it's it's definitely something for like the end of a huge, like huge winding tomb. Um, and uh, all of these fights are also um, situated so that they uh they scale based on the player's level when you first load the cell so mm -hmm. that's fun yeah that, that is good yeah. because when you make a quest mod it's always hard to determine where the player will be at and you can say oh best from level five or ten but from one character to another uh, i know my my barrister character at level 20 she still couldn't kill anything so <laughs> Level is not always <laughs> yeah. enough, so to have that is good. All right, tell us how how you scripted the the Nord Barbarian, the Frost Witch. Okay, um, yeah. So her like character sheet here, everything is pretty normal. Um, I basically just picked the class. I used auto calculate, and then I unchecked it, mm -hmm. and then kind of just rounded out all of her stats here. Yeah, that, that that's something actually quite important. So so it's worth repeating that when you when you click auto calculate stats based on the level, the class, and the race, you will have the stats as they would be, and this is great. But then most of the time, what you want to do as a modder is uncheck auto calculate stats, stats, sorry, and look at the spells. Uh, as Super Rupal was saying, NPC with spells are kind of dumb, and the spells that they're given by default are like resist blight disease weakness to come and just like stupid things for the npc so a lot of the time when you make your own mod you'll want to look at the spells remove the pointless one and just as super Duple said uh give your your npc just a couple of spells to make sure that they'll be using them and then yeah, never exactly. auto calculate your stats again with this npc mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's like you said, especially important for the spellcasters, mm -hmm. um, because they're what spells they have completely determines what they try to do. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think I mentioned this earlier, but or maybe I didn't actually. Maybe I'm hallucinating. But um, all this is pretty normal. Uh, you will notice that the axe is actually part of a leveled list. Mm -hmm. um, so there's three versions of the axe. Um, I actually didn't change the weapon itself. Oh, I have short sword here. Um, I didn't change the base weapon. I just took a Nord Nordic Battle Axe for the first level. And then I added stronger enchantments for the next two levels. Mm -hmm. So one of them um, is a lightning enchantment. And the other is, like I think, lightning and drain fat and absorb fatigue, mm -hmm. if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. um, so once think... again, if you go in there with a higher level NPC, the battle would be harder, but you'll get a better axe at the end of it. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Um and all of that, so that you know, there's a fair amount of customizing the fight you can do before you even get into the script. Mm. Um, but yeah, I guess we'll get into the script now. And like I said, this is the most simple one. Um, so, do you think you can uh, zoom in a little bit? 
I'm not sure that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Maybe even a bit more. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thanks. Is that good? Yeah, that's good. Thanks. Okay. No problem. Um. But yeah, so most of this stuff um is pretty. I'm not gonna like this one. I'll go into a bit of detail. But as they get more complicated, we would be here forever if I tried to explain everything. Um. But I'll go into a bit of detail here. Um, menu mode. Uh, this so if you have this return here that makes sure you like return you can't go past this until this is not true. So if a menu is active, then none of this will will happen, right? And a lot like this is one of the most common things you'll end up putting in your scripts. Usually, is you don't want things to happen while someone's in a pause menu. Mm -hmm. um, and then this is some stuff that uh, helps detect when she's dead. Helps um, because she has this passive health regeneration. It can make her death detection kind of weird, so you kind of have to grip some things to make sure it act it uh, behaves correctly. Mm -hmm. You actually got this idea from Abbott in the Morrowind modding Discord. I ran it by them what uh, my death detection scripts, and Abbott gave me a better version. So this is based on what Abbott said. As Abbott would do, give a better yep. version. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, what this basically does is because. If you have a passive health regeneration on an NPC, it can be really finicky. Mm -hmm. Like, it, it, the game can have a hard time detecting what their health is actually at or whether they've actually died. So, um, this, like, if they get below this certain, certain threshold of health, and if uh, their health is greater than zero, set health zero. Some people prefer to use mod current health here, mm -hmm. um, but I've found uh, an issue with that. Um, it can actually make their death animation be really screwy. Um, I don't use that personally. Um, set health has its own things where it can like. Um, I heard a Discord sound. Can you still hear me? <laughs> I have no. I can hear you. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Um, this can cause issues if you're using um, uh, get health get ratio, mm -hmm. but as long as you're aware of those issues, you can go be, get around them pretty easily. Okay. Um, this is like what actually makes up her fight. This stuff down here. Um, I'll talk about this one first. This only fires once. Whenever you load the cell, and it starts this level script right here, um, you could put the 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 stat stuff all in the same script. Um, you could put all this stuff in the same script. Uh, I just thought it looked neater to put it in its own script. Level script one. So, let me thank get you. This bigger for you too. Yeah. <laughs> um. Basically, and this is really cool. This is the first time I've used this little trick, but so this right here, this level script is a global script, as in it's not attached to anything. Mm -hmm. um, but this one where it's attached to the bard, and I, this is the first time I've ever used this trick. If you um, call a global script from a local script, yeah, it pretty much treats this global script as if it's part of the local script. Interesting. Yeah, so this is really like so. Normally, I would have to do like um, you know whatever the barbarian's idea, like barbarian ID, and then this arrow, mm -hmm. and then do this, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But because I'm calling it from the local script, it actually doesn't require that, which is really neat. Yeah, I get that. It's actually similar to the dialogue result box, where if you say add item blah blah blah, it will add the item directly to the NPC you're talking to. So you don't have yeah. to put the name of the NPC. But I didn't know about the global scripts. That is very, very neat. Yeah, I'd heard that trick a while ago, but this is the first time I've ever used it, and it works really well. Nice. Um, yeah, so, so if level 1 to 0, this will happen as soon as this barbarian is loaded. We run the level script. It sets her stats according to player level. And mm -hmm. this was just a debug message that I've commented out. It doesn't do anything. Um, and then once this has happened, then this will happen. Um, third health and third fatigue. Um, I wanted a fraction of her health and fatigue because um, I will restore her health and fatigue right here once mm -hmm. her rage starts. And mm -hmm. I wanted that to be a fraction of her health. I get that. Um, yeah, so I didn't use just a number here because the number would change depending on what level the player is. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Something I noticed as well in your uh, level script which is important to point out, you start it here, and in the script, right at the end, you stop it. Yes. Oh, yeah, that's a really good point. Um, 
Yeah, any global script, if you activate it, it will it will keep going until you deactivate it. Or I think until you like reload your game, which that's a behavior you don't want. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, the local script starts this and then it stops itself. Nice. Uh, so this is the rage. Uh, this is and so you might notice here that I have like these yes. uh, like uh, Yenny symbols instead of backspaces. I think this is some random keyboard I installed at some point. Uh, <laughs> just those are supposed to be backspace or uh, backslashes. Oh well. Um, oh well. Yeah. Looks very unique but, yeah, so that way. Exactly. I'm here to be. I'm here to be uh, unique. Um, yeah. Once she drops below uh, fifty percent of her health. Um, she'll re re regain some health, regain some fatigue. She'll get this passive ability that I was talking about with mm -hmm. like the frost shield and the regeneration. I think it increases her strength too. She'll say, I will bathe in your blood. And then this little trick right here, she places this activator at her feet. Mm -hmm. And this is what causes that frost explosion. Um, and this barb explodes grip, yeah. Um, so it drops this, it's literally like a napkin. But I um, <laughs> I make them a napkin very tiny so you can't see it. Um, why, why not use the you know the the red nif that are used for the sound or the hidden activators that sort of thing? You know that's what. So I I try actually I tried to do this in the last leap. It's the it's a mod that I made from Mod Jam. Mm -hmm. um, I tried I, to do exactly that. I remember that. well. I remember well. Yeah. <laughs> um, I tr I tried to do exactly that because I swear this used to work. I may I started working on a mod forever ago, and I swear I did exactly what you just said. Mm -hmm. But then I tried it in the last leap, and it's like when the when that activator that that uh, red activator tries to I think use the spell casting animation because you know it like glows. Mm -hmm. Um, it crashes the game because it's like, hey, this doesn't have a mesh, and you need a mesh in order for this animation to happen. Um. I don't, this might be just be a Bernstein Bears kind of thing yeah. where I swear this used to work, but then I tried <laughs> it and it didn't work anymore. Um, so, I mean, I haven't, this is literally impossible to see pretty much, even so, if you're looking for a it. A napkin, a napkin is good. Maybe those, yeah. those invisible activators, they tend to be things that are already there. Maybe placing them doesn't work as well. I don't know. But... Yeah. Yeah. I think it said something about the animation groups if i'm not mistaken mm -hmm. so that's why i assumed it was the spell casting yeah. um but yeah that is the first thing i tried in last leap and it told me no so this is this was my solution that works. Um, yeah and the reason i did this is for the explode spell right here and you see the explode spell is actually depending on the level also mm -hmm. um, there's like two versions and the second version can actually paralyze if you're above level 10 or 10 above um Unfortunately, you can't call explode spell from actors. Um, like I couldn't call the explode spell from the Nord, so that's why I had to do this whole song and dance to get this to happen. Can you um, can you tell us what the explode spell function does? Oh yeah, um, so you have to you have to formulate your um, you have to formulate your. Oh wait, no, this is the. There it is. Um. You have to formulate your spell in a certain way, but if you call a spell with a range of touch and an area, so these are important, it has to have a range of touch and it has to have an area. Mm -hmm. um, but if you call explode spell using one of these spells from an activator, that activator will 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 explode with the spell. Uh, kind of what it says on the tin, right? Um, so yeah, I put this tiny little napkin at the Nord's feet and the napkin casts this spell. <laughs> <laughs> As napkins do. Yeah. Okay. Just a so funny you, little trick. You, you not only get the visual, you also actually get the spell effect. Yeah, exactly. I, I, I honestly, I think the visual is just as important, if not more important, you know, because the spell's not very strong. It doesn't do much damage, but you know, it's you, like you're you want to, you want to know what's happening. Yeah. Okay. I think it's fun. Um, but yeah, very simple, straightforward right here. And like, like I said, I'll probably go into less detail with the more complicated fights because we'd be here forever. Um, I'm but... very, very curious about the rogue because that uh, flash bomb, that's very cool. Yeah. Very neat. Thanks. Uh, the, well, spoilers, it uses the napkin again. <laughs> <laughs> I expected no less. 
Uh, yeah, but um, so same thing here. Each of them have their own global leveling, leveling script that runs once as soon as the cell is first loaded. Mm -hmm. um, and that, you know, actually players can exploit that depending on how you format like your mod, like say, hey, if I go to the cell while I'm level one and then leave and then come mm -hmm. back when I'm level 20, the fight will be really easy. But I'm like, ah, eh, is that fun? Did you download the mod to have fun or did you use it? I don't know. Um, you, you know what? People have fun the way they want to have fun. But sometimes you, you get fun finding a loophole. So You know what? That's true. That's that's a fair point. And I feel like most of us play more when that way, so there's there's fun things to do. For me I'm happy when an NPC, like a powerful NPC, gets stuck on the furniture. I'm kinda like, okay, good. <laughs> I am not going to yeah. fix you. I know how to fix you, but I'm just not. Yeah, or get stuck in the water. I ran into that with one of my mods too. Yep, yep. Like, the water map looks amazing, but then you try to put a fight in it, and it's, eh. <laughs> um, Okay. Um, so, yeah, you'll see right off the bat that there's a lot more to this script. Mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah, I'll just kind of go down. So, you see health fraction, fatigue fraction. I think I worded it differently, but it's the same thing as the, as the barbarian. Uh, um, about that, can we take a second to talk about uh, the difference between a short variable, a global variable, and a float variable? Right. Um, so short and float variables are kind of the two main kinds of variables that you'll use in MW script. Um, there's, uh, there's also one called long, but honestly, mm -hmm. I couldn't even tell you what its usefulness is. I'd assume um, it, it, it can like... have a bigger number. That's, that's my guess, but I don't see it yeah. ever. Yeah, like short variables. Uh, I, I've never once seen a long variable used. Maybe it is used, but I don't find it super useful. Um, short variables uh, are like integers. They're like whole numbers. So one, two, three, four, five, zero. Um, float variables can kind of be used the same way, but they have uh, decimal values. Mm -hmm. that, so they can get way more granular. Um, and so like these timers right here, especially, I mean, all, the health and fatigue should also be floats, but these timers, especially, um, they, you know, the, the, the get seconds past function return to float variable. So if you want to use that function, any variable that uses it needs to be a float variable also. So that so that it can record those decimals. And you'll run into bugs if you try to use a short variable for a timer. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, this right here is just a note for myself. Short mode, zero is melee mode, one is range mode. Um, this is the thing I was talking about with... Um, when they like die? If, so making sure his loot is correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so if he doesn't have a sword, give him a sword, and then give him some throwing knives to make sure he has some throwing knives as loot. Um, just Same thing here. Re sorry, real quick before that, um, I want to point out that using the message box to test or debug is an excellent way. <laughs> I'm saying that like I do a lot of coding. I don't. But <laughs> the little bit I did just to, to go, okay, <laughs> my, my script so far is doing what I want it to do. Let's move on mm -hmm. to the next part. Also, uh, it's very useful for people who are trying to learn how to script their own thing and to see those things. Um, like you have the explanation for your local variables. Super, super helpful to leave comments uh, for, mm -hmm. for the person reading it. That yeah. was it. And I will, yeah, I will say for these NPC fights, I, so actually for the Bone Lord fight, I put these all over the place and i was like tried to be really clear i did not go into that much detail for these and maybe that maybe i'll update it and like put comments in there that are much more detailed mm -hmm. um but the bone lord fight you'll see that i put those little i put like exactly what everything does um but yeah so all of this stuff so far is the similar to the barbarian you know level up once uh, get these health fractions to use later mm -hmm. um uh, this right here, uh, this is a trick I like um, because so if get spell readied uh, zero, if get weapon drawn zero, then return. That means if they're not in combat mode, none mm -hmm. of this happens. Otherwise, this boy would just be standing around doing his taxes and teleporting around the battlefield. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> um, this right here, if he gets hit with his own flashbang, it removes it because that's just kind of lame. Um, yeah, it, you, it could, you be couldn't funny, use but... the, the poison trick with the undead and the resist frost or couldn't couldn't you 
also um, give him, well, no, because if you gave him a resistance to magic, then the player couldn't be playing, right? So you had to Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Get it? So, and actually, in the bar for the Barbarian, um, for the Barbarian Rage, I actually did, once the Rage kicks in, I actually did give the Barbarian immunity to Paralysis, so, because the higher level one um, mm -hmm. uh, causes Paralysis for a couple seconds. Mm -hmm. um, but I thought that made sense for Rage, like, she's so angry, you just can't paralyze her. Yeah, um, you can't stop her. Yeah. <laughs> this one, though, it's exactly like you said. Um, uh, I, I think giving him an immunity to magic would, you know, just... I don't see that as necessarily a rogue ability, and the player would be affected by that, so... Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Um, yeah, so that's why I did it that way. Um, yeah, this is the this is the whole thing that decides what mode he's in, whether or not he... what kind of weapons he's using. Um, so, like... Uh, if the player is close, if he doesn't have a sword, give him a sword. If he does have a knife, get rid of the knives. Um, so, you know, two different kinds of knives that he uses. Same. So otherwise, this is the this is the far away mode. Um, if he doesn't have knives, give him knives. If he has a sword, get rid of swords. Very straightforward. Mm -hmm. um, and then this whole thing, I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty of exactly how all this works. And you can see my debug messages here that I've commented out. Um, is for that I'm for testing. Um, so I'm like detecting their weapon type. Like, are they in melee? So the rogue wants to disrupt the player, right? Mm -hmm. So if the player's in melee, they want to make the player fight at a fight at range. If the player is in is is using a bow or something is in range, then they want to get up close. Mm -hmm. Um. So this dictates what mode he's in and what um, whether he tries to get farther or uh, closer to the player. Mm -hmm. um, just a just a so quick yeah. note for people wondering the uh, get weapon type. This is something that can be found on the uh, UESP where you have all the get weapon types and and you can see which which number is which type of weapon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think this is the first time I've used that too. It's a really, it's a really fun trick. Um, let's see, oh yeah, so you see, uh, it's based on timers. Like, so if you're far away, these timers are going or they're not going, or if you're close, the timers are going or not going. And down here, once these timers get to seven seconds, an arbitrary number that I decided, this is when they teleport and mm -hmm. do flashbang stuff. Mm -hmm. Um. So this spriggin' up is that green teleportation effect you see me use all over the place. I honestly overuse it probably. Um, but and this is the napkin. This is the flashbang napkin. So <laughs> the same exact thing as the barbarian uh, frost thing. He'll throw this down at his feet when he teleports away from the player, um, and then that that activator will use explode spell, and that will apply to the player the flashbang, which is the blindness and the sound effect. Um, also, this rogue knife right here actually has a slight paralysis enchantment, and it's a bit stronger than the regular steel throwing knives, so whenever he teleports away, the first knife he'll throw is a paralysis knife, and then he'll switch to other knives. Oh, I see, um, because you give him one, the NPC yes. will automatically equip the one that deals the most damage. So mm. we use that first and go with a classic steel throwing knives. Yes. Very sneaky um, all around. Yeah. Uh, yeah, sneaky scripting for a sneaky guy. Um, but uh, yeah, I think I think he didn't manage to hit me with the paralysis knives when I was testing. So like you know, just then when I was showing you, which was kind of unfortunate. But that's how it's supposed. You were to... moving so fast, um, and so once yeah. again, the rogue flash act is placed at the feet, and then it uh, it has its own script that will do the spell effect that you want it to do. Um, yeah, it's the, ex it's literally the exact same mm -hmm. as the other one. Um, and it deletes, it, it disables and deletes itself after five seconds. Um, the reason I gave it that long, cause it only needs like two seconds to do the casting animation, but mm -hmm. in my testing, if I delete it or disable it while it's trying to do this animation, it will crash the game. Okay. <laughs> so, let's not, let's not. Yeah. So that's why I gave it a full five seconds before it uh, turns itself off. Um, but yeah, 
That's the okay. rogue. That's the rogue. I like how essentially using the same sort of script, you can get very varied effects. That's very cool. Yeah. Oh, and I, I, I guess I should point out these as well. These little red dots are where he teleports to. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll just go over these really quick. So if he's close, if the, if the player's close to him, he wants to get far away, right? Yeah. Um, so it's hard to remember which one is which, but so like one of them says, hey, if I'm the farthest one away and you want to get far away, come to me. Like use my use my coordinates. Mm -hmm. But if you want to get closer and I'm the closest one, then you come to me. And each one of them has their own script. I see. Yeah. Um, Navigate. Okay. Um, this one uh, is probably my favorite. <laughs> um, not to have favorite children, but I have favorite children. Um, yeah. So you'll see she has these same dots around here. Um, mm -hmm. Those will spawn, have a chance to spawn the paper tornadoes that you saw. Nice. Um, this is the book that you mentioned earlier. Um, and I use some sets. This is the force field that comes around it. I used set scale to like make it encapsulate this when you're actually in game. Um, but this is the book that appears as like a. It's like a. If you played Mass Effect, I kind of modeled it off the singularity power in Mass Effect. Um, but uh, yeah, so we'll just open up her script really quick. Um, yeah, so there's a lot going on and here. A, You'll and see a zoom like some. As well, please. Oh, yep, yep, yep. Good. Is that good? Yeah, that's good. Okay. So she still doesn't have, like, that many variables going. So, but um, another message box here. I, I don't want the paper tornadoes to keep trying to kill you after she dies, so this turns them off. Um, the same death detection stuff that I've used in the other ones. Mm -hmm. Level same. one, she has her own level script. Um, this one right here is kind of interesting. Um. So where's the, let me find the paper tornado timer. Um, uh, yeah, so like down here is the stuff that, so you see it's like 30 seconds between when it tries to spawn the paper tornadoes. Um, but uh, right here, I actually go ahead and set the paper timer to negative five, which means that once battle starts, um, once battle starts, where's the... Yeah, so here's the same thing, making sure she doesn't mm -hmm. uh, try to summon things while she's doing her taxes. Um, but once everything else down here activates, um, so it will actually, after the fight starts, there will only be five seconds before the first paper tornado spawn. But after that, then they're in increments of 30 seconds. I see. Uh, oh, yeah, she has a lot of timers going. Uh, she has the book timer for when, how often she... Uh, summons books. She has her sing timer, which is how often she'll try to use the singularity spell. Uh, and, she, and she's chance. not going to sing. It's a bit disappointing, no, honestly. Yeah. I was expecting a lot more from the sorceress. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Um, that's my fault. It's I've confused myself with that as well. Like sing timer. What, what is she the, talking? Think about oh, the, think about your future boss battle with a bard. I mean, actually, yeah, I would really exactly. like that where there's. I don't know, a, a deafening song or something. That could be really fun. But that's for another yeah, that day. Be... Another day. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So we've got these timers that go. Um, so, like, every 13.3 seconds. I just made them weird numbers so they don't overlap with each other as often as possible. Mm -hmm. um, every 13.3 seconds, she'll try to summon some... So she'll either summon uh, one, two, or three books. Mm -hmm. Um and then each book actually has its own script that decides what kind of spell it will try to cast. So an offensive spell will be directed at the player, or a healing spell might be might be directed at the sorceress. Did, um, did and we each see book one has of those? its own random chance. What? Did we see one of those when you when you played? Um, it was it was I don't think very so. chaotic. <laughs> it was extremely chaotic. <laughs> um, which is why, you know, I was actually going to save this for the end of the fight, but I love all of the gimmicks that she uses. Maybe they shouldn't all be active at the same time. <laughs> Maybe like so, a phase as kind a, of approach. As you were explaining that, because you you have the, the levels, I guess it wouldn't be uh, very difficult to 
sort of randomize the encounter. Sometimes yeah. she's going to be using fire and ice. Sometimes she's going to be using uh, heal and shield on herself. I don't, I don't know. That, that could be fun, indeed. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, book, spell, script. I don't think I ended up using this one. Oh, uh, yeah, but yeah, you can see here more of my message boxes for testing. Like, hey, it's trying to cast spells. It's trying to cast shock, fire, poison, or it's trying to heal the sorceress. Um, so yeah, this is each each book that is summoned has a chance to do this. Um, if you're using this in an actual mod, maybe spread these out across multiple phases. Um, but you know, it is also kind of fun for the mayhem, depending on what you're looking for. Then mm -hmm. they delete themselves after five seconds. Um, and here's the disable right there. Yeah, the books are fun. Uh, my favorite part is probably the paper tornadoes, though. And it took me forever to get this script working. Um, when it, it, when it looks them. simpler. Uh, OK, I was going to say it looks it looks like a nice, simple script. Here we go. Yeah, um, that was just the the script for those little red points that has a chance to mm -hmm. it has a random chance to summon them. But yeah, so it you know it sets its own scale. It like scales up and down gradually. Um, it has this little sound effect going. Um, this is it. Um, it's, this is when it, they're uh, moving to the, player. the players. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it. Getting keeping track of the player's position. Um, it only lasts for twenty seconds. Or it'll go away if it hurts you three times. It'll go away if the if you're in a singularity, because I thought that was too mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like, stuck no, in a singularity. No, no, no. They're taken care of. We can go. Yeah. <laughs> um, so this is just uh, what, what hurts the player. Like if they're within 50 in-game units, um, then you can use these. Yeah, um, because I'm not using the collision, because, you know, there's like a get colliding PC, get colliding actor mm -hmm. uh, function. That's, that's what is used not in, using... the, in the Sothisil traps, yeah. I think, yeah. Yeah, uh, I'm not using those here just because the paper tornadoes have very weird collision, mm -hmm. and it doesn't behave very well, so I just kind of jury rigged my own. Um... Yeah, it kind of deletes itself. Oh, yeah, this, I did kind of explain something here. Um, uh, this is me trying because so if you have some, like these local scripts um, are executed once every single frame, mm -hmm. right? Um, so if uh, depending on your frame rate, how often it executes changes, um, mm -hmm. which isn't which sometimes it doesn't cause a problem but for like these tornadoes they would be way faster if you had a higher frame rate or way slower if you had a slower frame rate <laughs> finally um, having a sucky fps pays off uh unless you do this and circumvent that problem um, Damn. uh yeah this is just me using trying to create like a delta function that um kind of makes it more uniform to where mm -hmm. depending on your pc it should always be the same um yeah I like that script. It took me a long time to get it to work. Uh, uh, trying to see if there's anything else in here I should talk about. The, the singularity, picking up the player and dropping them. How does that work? Okay, yeah. So, <laughs> so 21 points, every 21.7 seconds, she will uh, try to, she'll start trying to cast the singularity spell on the player. Um, actually, something to talk about here. Uh, this is kind of wacky, but in vanilla Morrowind, um, like in the vanilla engine, you even if you take a, a spellcaster's spells away from them in the middle of a fight, they will ignore you and keep casting them. Interesting. Um, so, but so a way to get around that is if if I need you to switch up your spell list, I stop combat, change your spells, and then start combat again. <laughs> um, and it seems to work in my testing. I've tested this fight quite a bit. Um, yeah, so then she'll start trying to hit you with this Where is it? Or singularity. Um, so it gives you one point of levitate, mm -hmm. uh, weakness to magicka, and it drains your speed. Um, and so what this does, it makes you able to fly, right? 
um, it makes you less likely to resist this effect, and it will drain your speed, um, because if your player's super fast, uh, they'll actually be able to run their way out of the spell. Uh, even we even the scripted that. part would. We can't have that. Yeah. But like the thing is, if you boosted your speed to where you still had a high speed, even despite that, you could actually get out of it, which I think is fun. But it had to be really high. Hmm. Um, where's the... I think the book script is the one that... Is... So eventually, once they get complicated enough, you have to remember where all the scripts are. <laughs> um, hope it's not there. I guess it is in her script. But yeah, basically, it just... So the one of the scripts just detects, hey, is the player under the effects of the spell? Okay, then I'm going to pull the player up toward the book in the center. Hmm. Um... I have to remember where this effect is, and I might not be able to remember. <laughs> um, oh, I wonder if it's attached to the... You're watching the process in real time. I wonder if it's attached to this. It is. <laughs> uh, let's see. Yeah, so... This, this sorceress is very crafty. Hiding yeah, spells is. in everything. <laughs> yeah, um... So yeah, this is what, uh, you know, it's just getting its own positions. It's This also keeps track of the player position the same way the tornado does. Mm -hmm. So this, yeah, so if the player is under the effects, if it's not under the effects of singularity, then we make ourselves tiny. We don't want, we don't want ourselves to be seen. Otherwise, it will be visible. Mm -hmm. It has its own sound effect. This, I do use the hurt colliding actor because this collision seems to behave. Mm -hmm. um, and then I use the same delta, or I call it dolta. Because it's like an adult's attempt to do Delta. <laughs> okay. um, <laughs> but yeah, so it's like if the player has this uh, has these spell has this effect of this spell, then it you know makes itself visible, and it sets the player's position closer and closer to the book. And when it gets in collision with the force field, then it will hurt the colliding player. Is mm -hmm. basically the idea. And then it deletes itself once the player is no longer under the spell effect. Nice. Probably the most finicky fight, um, but it's probably my favorite also. Okay, and then there's this one. Um, yeah, so you'll see I use a leveled list for the creature. And the reason I do that, like, if you... So this Bone Lord, if it's using melee attacks, right? Uh -huh. um, if, if you increase its strength, it's not going to do any more damage. Um... I don't know why it is that way, <laughs> but that is in my testing. That is how it seems. I, uh, I would I would guess because it's connected to its combat ratio and then the damage itself, rather than the strength on its own. I think yeah, I think you're onto something there. Um, I would imagine it's more like you know it's like yeah. maybe the combat value, but I thought the combat value was more chance to hit. I don't know. I still need to do more testing there. Um. Yeah, it's like it gets its melee damage mostly from like this these these values right here. Mm -hmm. But what I did is I just made the different versions do way more damage. Yeah, <laughs> and then it uses a leveled list to decide which one to use. Mm -hmm. um, because the the, the it... script you were using for the level of the NPCs wouldn't work on the creatures. Uh, so it that script so like that script would work. Um, but it so if but if I increased its strength, mm -hmm. nothing would happen. Nothing would happen. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I instead just use the like I call it the character sheet. I just use the <laughs> the character sheet and the uh, um and the leveled list. But mm -hmm. I think I do um I do increase its magicka and health according to player level though, like and fatigue. Mm -hmm. Um, I think this is it. Just the boss script. Oh yeah, this is the one with all the fun little notes in that. Helpful, I'm trying to be. Yeah, like some things in our script should only happen once, right? When the boss is loaded, we'll do that here. And I explain what everything does. <laughs> don't if you disable teleporting, don't forget to re-enable it. That's super useful. In fact, I think most of what we've learned with scripting comes from the comments and the notes that were in the original scripts. That's how mm. we were able to figure out a lot of things. Right. This is what I was talking about with setting the uh, 
the health and fatigue and magicka. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And actually, it also it gets more of each depending on because you know it goes through all these stages when you kill it over and over. So it gets progressively stronger that way also. Um, menu mode, thing as before. Um, this is one thing I might change. I might update the the modder's resource. So you see, I'm using specific core. This is when it's levitating in the middle of the in the middle of the room. Mm-hmm. And I'm and I'm keeping it at these specific coordinates. Um, but I think I would be better off using this as like. I use this with the other scripts, and I don't know why I didn't do it this way, but um, like having it detect its own current position depending on where you place it in the world, mm-hmm. and then using a, a variable here instead of an actual number, I think would be better for, for people who are trying to use these fights in their own mods. I think that would make things easier. Mm-hmm. But I might change that. Um, this is the levitation spell. The cheaty um, spell. You know, all this you stuff. Mean... What? The cheaty spell? Yeah. <laughs> A taste of your own medicine spell. Yeah. Um, um, but yeah, that just uh, on phases, on stages two and four, it just lets it fly in the middle of the room for a few seconds. Um, oh yeah, so I use the resurrect thing. That means you, you I use the resurrect function, which means mm-hmm. you actually kill the boss multiple times. Mm-hmm. Um, which means theoretically you could soul trap it multiple times. <laughs> um. So my workaround for that was to not allow it to be soul trapped until it's in its final stage. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, this is just, uh, I don't need to go over all of this stuff, but this is just hap- what happens, uh, like, if it dies, um, and I have this function down here for that, if it dies and it's below stage four, then you resurrect and you do all these things. You set stats go, you reset its stats for each incarnation, and like I said earlier, it gets a bit more beefy each time. Mm-hmm. Um, um, yeah, and then I reset the fly timer because it flies more than once. Um, we run the spell script again. I think, uh, let's take a look at that one, LT spell script. Because it's been a while since I've worked on this fight. Um, LT spell script. I'm willing to bet this is just different versions of spells for different player levels. Yep. Yep. So, so it changes levels as thing. It changes spells as things go, but then it also has different versions of its spell depending on the player level. Yeah. And then this is just uh, this is just what we do to detect its death and say, okay, it's died once. Time to go to the next stage. And then then each um, stage has its own collection of spawns, and each of the spawns mm -hmm. has their 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 own script. Yes, Um, and like I like uh, I said with the sorceress, you might be better off making the sorceress kind of similar, right? Um, So that everything's not happening at once; it all happens in phases, and it's a bit more distinct. But it's whatever you want to do. Um, I'm just bringing this up because uh, these little spawn locations actually are randomized um, and it's weighted determined by the player's level so like there's a chance for if you're level one it could summon a lesser bone walker it could summon an ancestor ghost a skeleton minion but um, once you get higher um, skeleton champions or maybe even a lich if you're very high level could show yeah, up yeah a lich um, that's exactly what the player needs in this fight in the middle of yes. the the bone lower the archers Yep, yep. I I thought I thought it felt appropriate. Yep, yep. Definitely, and also, definitely course, a memorable fight. Yeah, and players can scale it down if they want. They can scale it up if they want. Mm-hmm. Um, I I honestly, there were also used to be greater bone walkers in here, but I'm not mm. that evil. Um, <laughs> I would rather fight a lich than greater bone walkers personally. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, bone walkers. <laughs> Okay, well, there's a lot going on with those. Um, But the good news is that the plugin with all the scripts, with all the comments, that is available on Nexus. So I encourage people to take a look at it. Play, I would say, play the the fights to see how they go and then decide what you want to do with your own boss. Have a... A fight with 10 different stages and all the summons or mm-hmm. or just 
take a couple of things and, and add that to a couple of different fights. The everything is possible. Yeah, it would get it would get where it would wear on the player very quick if all of the fights were this, you know, crazy complex. It would wear on you too. You'd never finish a mod. Um, <laughs> but this yeah, this is just to give you a bunch of ideas, uh, just like templates or just things to get your own imagination going. Is my only goal with this. Yeah. There's lots of things that like, it can be just oh, the, the flash bomb. The flash bomb is cool, honestly, triggering not triggering the rage, uh, triggering a, a change of strategy in the NPC, because you're right, when you fight an NPC, they will cast spells that they know, so long as they have the magicka. Then they will use range if they have it, and then they will move to melee. That, that, that's it. Like they're, they're not very smart. <laughs> Let's face it. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> So it's like a fun to... little, it's like a puzzle to figure yeah. out like how, like mm. it's simplistic AI, but it's like a puzzle. Like, how do I make this interesting? Mm. Mm. Be, being able to make them change their strategy at, at a given point. And it could, it could be also because we have to detect which spell is, is being used, but you could, uh, when you're, if your NPC is hit by a fire spell, although there's many of them. You know, then they could cast a fire shield or something. Like you could make them react to what's happening, mm -hmm. or just cast a shield, but only after they've been hit, for example, and that sort of things. Yeah, there's tons of options. So many, so many options. Thank you so much for sharing this with us, for making the plugin available so we can take a look at it and uh, and try to make our our own homebrew of battle yeah thank you for talking about this with me it's it's fun to geek out over this sort of thing yeah it is so much fun like i'm not i'm not making a mod with a fight and an npc but just just listening to you like, oh yeah i could do that oh i could do that oh that's cool yeah. i should try that um not enough time to mod barely enough time to play mm -hmm. yeah but that's the way it is. I was very disappointed uh, a while ago. I was uh, playing. I was in Satan and I went to the Smuggler's Cave and I found your sword and I'm crap with a sword so I couldn't even pick it up. <laughs> I was so disappointed. I'm gonna have to oh, make no. a I'm gonna have to make a, a proper fighter who knows how to use a sword so so I can play the, the mod properly. Yeah. There's, there's, you know, it, it's transforming weapons, so it can be a dagger, it could be a bow, if you find the right pieces. Really? Well, but yeah. I, I've already you... killed that character because it was permadeath, so long gone, over. Oh, okay. <laughs> You're talking about Bleedmeister, right? But yeah, yeah, I am. Yeah, yeah. That's good yeah, to so know. yeah, that's the, it can transform into a dagger, and he, but you have to like find the pieces, but it's fine. It's like a little puzzle. Yeah, I like that. I, I just love when things change with you for you because of you all of it uh, i love that sort of mm -hmm. thing anyway thank you so much for spending time explaining things to us uh, i'll definitely be taking a look what is the name of the the mod the resource mod oh it's called uh lost tomb i made a big long lost name tomb. it's like lost tomb modders resource for scripted battles or something all yeah, it should, you should find it if you just type in Lost Tomb. Lost Tomb. That, that's that's what I had forgotten. I remembered Modest Resource, but I did not remember that was in the in the title. Thank you so much. Right. Um, hopefully, we're going to see many boss battles in future mods. Not just yours, but uh, others. Um, because those yeah. are fun. Yeah, that's the hope. <laughs> Excellent. Talk to you soon. Yep. Yeah, thanks. See ya.